The coronavirus pandemic is raging again in Europe, and new rules are going into place to slow it down. That's led to violent protests in places like Italy. Europe now reports nearly half of the world's new COVID cases, 1.3 million just last week, an all-time high. Seth Doan is in Rome. Seth, how's that country responding to that? Well, Anthony, there are new rules and regulations. For a while now, we've had to wear these masks both outside and inside. Now the newest restrictions include a curfew that all restaurants have to close after 6 p.m. and gyms and pools are also closed. There have been some protests, scattered protests around the country. And in some cases, various extremist groups have hijacked those protests, sparking violence. Overnight, police in riot gear fired tear gas to push back protesters that had set fires in the northern cities of Turin and Milan. While most protests against the government restrictions, curfew and closures have been peaceful, Italy's national police tell CBS News these scenes are the result of instigators from far right, far left and organized crime groups who've infiltrated and carried out violence. Across Europe, coronavirus cases are spiking. This chart shows the surges since September. Look at Germany, Spain, the United Kingdom and France, which now has the fifth highest number of cases globally. Spain, the first European country to have more than one million confirmed cases, declared a second state of emergency. Governments and the World Health Organization are urging everyone take personal responsibility and limit contact. We can avoid national lockdowns. We can avoid massive restrictive movements if everyone plays their part. Those pleas to lessen community spread are also coming from Europe's hospitals. In Belgium, doctors in one city have been asked to keep working even if they have coronavirus. But overall, death rates are down, and those admitted to critical care are more likely to survive. We feel we can offer every patient the best possible opportunity to get through it based on um, some much firmer science that we can draw on now. The prognosis for businesses is less encouraging. September was uh, the first month for us that we started to go in the right way. So now we have to stop again. You can see that the square behind me here, many of the streets are relatively empty, far fewer people than there normally would be. For the most part, Italians are quietly cooperating with these restrictions. And Gail, I would say there is really more fear here than anger, fear of returning to where we were at the pandemic's peak back in the spring. Yeah. Thank you, Seth Doan. I think that's what we all fear, feel is fear. Yeah. But uh, did he say that doctors, even if they have it, are, are yeah. told they've got to go one, back to work? In one, in one place. I don't understand that at all. But it is. I mean, I think you understand why some people are upset. It's very disheartening. People, they, in it. Europe, as well as here, people have worked so hard to try to get through this and to have to go backwards. Uh, it's, you know, it's a long fight. But this tells you this virus is... is is stubborn it's and thriving. Yep, yes. and yeah. and will surge back if you if you let down yeah. your guard. A 6 p.m. dinner curfew is pretty early in a yeah. country where they don't even eat till seven or later. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to take a collective sacrifice. We keep saying that. I know. Got to wear your so, mask. It's so hard for these businesses. And nobody though. likes wearing a mask. I get that. Yep.